Here we have an algebraic equation that we want to solve for x. x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. So we want to take this equation and solve for x. To do this, we're going to use the completing the square method. So it's a, new, a different method than some of the other ways we've been doing it. To do that, there's a, set, there's a little algorithm that we follow to do that. There's a couple of different ways to do that. I'll do it my way, which I find to be simple. Uh, step number one, move this term. So we have this in the form ax squared minus bx, uh, sorry, plus bx plus c equals zero. So uh, the first thing we want to do is move the c term to the other side. So we have x squared minus 3x equals 10. Now the second thing we want to do is take this term, b, the b term, divide by 2 and square it. So we're going to find b over 2 squared. So b is negative 3. And we square that, so that gives us 9 over 4. So 3, negative 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4. We take this term. The third step is we take this term and we add that to both sides. Remember, you have to do the same thing to both sides. It's still an equation. So x squared minus 3x plus 9 fourths equals 10 plus 9 fourths. Great. Fourth thing we want to do is simultaneously simplify this side by using common denominators and factorize this side. That's going to be called completing the square, that step right there. This looks a little bit ugly. But to complete the square, we know that we already have the pieces we need. So let's, let's start with this one. If we want to have common denominators here, 10 becomes 40 over 4. 40 plus 9 becomes 49 over 4. To complete the square here, we know we're going to have x's. We know we need uh, two negatives, because this is going to come out to be positive. So we need two negatives to multiply to get a positive. What do we put in here? Well, it's just this. It's this b over 2 term. So that b over 2 term is 3 halves. So you can see right away, we could just put in negative 3 halves. So 3 over 2, 3 over 2. What is completing the square? It means these two quantities are exactly the same. So we can actually just write it as this, a square like that. And that's what they mean by completing the square. Let's just rewrite it then. Great. So we're almost done. Next thing we need to do is basically solve. We have a square here which means we need to take the square root of both sides. We're digging out that x still. So let's do that. Take the square root. And that gives us x minus 3 halves here. This is simplified to that. The square root of this is going to give us a plus and a minus number. And this is how we get our two answers from this quadratic equation. So square root of 49 is 7. Square root of 2 is 2. And remember, don't forget your plus or minus here. So you have two answers. Finally, one more step. We need to get this x all by itself. We add a 3 halves to both sides. So x equals 3 halves plus or minus 7 halves. So this is going to give us two answers, the positive version and the minus version. So x1 equals 3 halves plus 7 halves. 3 plus 7 is uh, 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So we have x1 equals 5. Now we have 3 halves minus 7 halves. So x2 equals 3 halves minus 7 halves is negative 4 halves. Negative 4 is uh, divided by 2 is just negative 2. So we have two mini equations here at the very end. So this gives us x1 is 5, x2, negative 2.